Hi everyone, it's Michelle from Country Morning Creations. I am here with a tutorial on how to make a signature cradle, a signature punching cradle, um, a book cradle. I'm, I'm never quite sure what all to call this. However, I struggle with being able to punch my signatures just by hand especially because I like to stack all my signatures together at once. That way I know that my holes go in the same exact spot. So I decided I had some leftover foam core and I'll post a picture of that. So that foam core was what kind of inspired me to design this. It is just the foam core with some cardstock that was pre-printed. As a matter of fact, hang on a second, I'll grab it. I used the Lavender by Prima from Hobby Lobby uh, paper pad for this and I just used a couple of pages out of it. It is shaped like this, so you can see on the ends it is shaped to hold it. It's pretty sturdy. This foam core here, I'll show you on the back. This is the extruded polystyrene foam. You can get it at your Hobby Lobby or anything like that. It's pretty solid. But what I have, the, the other reason I developed this was because I was really tired of punching into my um, work surfaces, no matter what it was. So by having something like this, I actually not only can punch down into something, but it doesn't have to stop right there, so I'm not stopping at the top. I can actually punch all the way through without having to hold it up to punch. So I demonstrate this at the end, but I'll demonstrate it again real quick. So you simply punch down into the foam core. And that makes this just so much easier. I know that there's lots of other people out there who've built them. A lot of people have ones that are uh, you can collapse them, you can fold them, you can put them away, but this was what I wanted to make for me. And the other thing I love is because it's foam core, this weighs almost nothing. It is very light. So I can put this way up on a top shelf and put it out of the way and not worry about it falling on my head. If it does fall on my head, it's probably not going to hurt a lot because it doesn't weigh very much. So without further ado, let's get started. So we are here now with everything is all cut apart. I've cut the core of this or the basis of this out of this foam core. And right now I have three um, toothpicks at the four inch mark. So this is eight inches by 11 inches. And then I've cut two pieces that are two inches by two inches. So this foam core, foam core is two inches wide, and then I cut it two inches this way, and then I measured in one and three quarters of an inch this way, one and three quarters of an inch this way, and cut the angle. So what we're going to do now is glue these side pieces on. I am using the tight bond. This is the wood glue because Basically, I've heard from a lot of people that it's pretty amazing and that it, uh, um, I'm trying to get the lid off here. There we go. Um, it's pretty amazing and it glues just about anything and everything. What I chose to do, I want these smooth edges next to each other. And I will say this stuff is pretty tough to uh, actually make it to cut because it wants to crumble apart. So we are going to cover this all in the end, but for now we just want to put some wood glue on. I'm going to go ahead and smooth this out everywhere with my fingers. It is yellow. It does not dry clear. It will dry this yellowy color, just so you know, and that's why we will go back and go ahead and uh, neaten things up once this is all dry. So I'm going to go ahead. So we want the angles pointing down so that once we put the pieces of cardboard in, you can get it to all 
sit correctly. All right, so I'm going to put this on, get this all spread out again. Uh, it doesn't need to be clamped as long as you are laying this down flat. That's kind of the most important thing. So this is flat and I have this on a flat surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this piece down here and make sure they're lined up front to back as well. So at this point, I'm just going to let this dry and I'll be back. All right, now we have our, um, everything is dried. It takes about 30 minutes for the tight bond to dry and it's dry now. And what we're going to do next is take um, cardstock that I have. I am personally using another Prima pad. I like a lot of their papers. I love Tim Holtz too, don't get me wrong. I'm just in the mood for this one. And we're going to cut it, cut a couple of pieces up to go on and cover up all the writing and stuff. So this is the lavender one. What we're going to do is take this and we're going to, since this is the right side up, we're going to cut this four inches, four inches, and four inches. And then we're going to cut those down a little bit. So I'm just grabbing my cutter because that is my favorite way to cut things down. I've got ribbon, I've got all kinds of stuff on my desk. You really don't want to see it because it is a mess. Although on the other hand, you may want to see it because it is a mess. All right, so we're gonna make three four inch wide cuts. Well, actually we're gonna make two cuts and then the third cut is simply cutting this extra off. So these are all four inches tall. And of course, if you don't have a cutter, I highly recommend you get one. But if you don't have one, don't worry because you can um, simply uh, use scissors. Sorry, I got distracted there a second. We're going to cut one inch off the bottom of this one. And this is one of the things I like is that this cutter goes both directions. So I'm going to cut one inch off that. And then I'm going to cut one inch off this side as well. And then I need to grab some more. So these are these are the sides here. And then we're going to need a four inch wide by eight inch wide piece here. So I am going to actually set this piece aside for a moment right now. Grab another one of the same paper. You can, of course, be wild and crazy and use a different paper as well if you would prefer. Um, totally up to you. So this one is going to be four inches again. And the other one is also going to be four inches. And that will leave us with one last four inch piece, which I'm going to probably use somewhere anyway. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cut this down to four inches as well. So part of what I'm doing right now, I haven't made a prototype to see how this all works. So we're gonna kind of learn together. We're just going to do this together. So, nope, that's not one of the ones that's cut down. For right now, I'm going to go ahead, go back and find the pieces that I cut down that are 11 inches. So this is 11 inches, nope. Here we go, let's try this one last time. This is 11 inches by four inches, and it's going to get glued right along the edge here, and we are going to glue the other one right along the edge here. We will use the tight bond again, because I want to, I don't want to melt this. This is foam. It will melt if you use your Fabrifix or your E6000 
or your three in one, anything that's not a water base, you might be able to get away with Mod Podge or Aileen's Tacky Glue or one of those, but test it first and make sure it doesn't melt your foam. All right, so we've got those. That one goes there. That one will go there. Now, what we need to do is cut a U-shaped piece for each end. So they're four inch, it's eight inches wide. And I'm just going to double check that math again. So we're going to double check that this is eight inches wide. And it is, yay, I did that right. <laughs> so I need two that are eight inches wide. Let's see, these are the 11 inch ones, right? 12, all right, so we're going to cut these down to eight inches. And I'll need two of these that are eight inches. So I'm going to cut this one also down to eight inches. Then comes the fun part, which is where we have to math. So we're going to, with these two eight inch ones, we need to cut out four inches in the middle Yes, I am doing that right, and I wish there was a way that I could do it this way, but there really isn't a good way. I'm actually going to flip these over and use the backs. I have no idea why I have a pin there. I'm working on three projects simultaneously, by the way, so that um, has a lot to do with why my desk looks like it does. I'm working on a whole bunch of different journal things. So I am going to just grab a pen. We're going to randomly come in a little bit. We're going to measure two inches. We're going to measure two inches again. We're going to measure two inches one more time to make sure that we meet up in the middle. Then I'm going to measure two inches in this way. And another two inches in this way. I don't know if you can see that. Let me move this up a little bit. And then we're going to go, oh, you know what? Let me double check that I've got the top going up. And I don't, we want this, oh yeah, I do, yay. Well, that is a happy accident because I had forgotten to check that there is a right side up and a wrong side up for these. So being on the back side, we're simply going to Connect the dots. And connect the dots one more time. And then we simply cut along those lines. And then we're going to turn this work our scissors in there. One of the things when cutting, here's just a little tip, never cut all the way to the tip of your scissors. It will mess up your paper if you do that. And I work with a lot of middle school kids who insist on doing it that way, and that will definitely not go well. So as you can see, that will go there. And then, we, once we're done, I'm going to do the other one, and I will just stop the camera here and do the other one. And then last but not least, I'm going to take one of these longer pieces, and this is one and three-fourths, and this is one and three-fourths. So I'm going to go ahead and cut up the rest of these pieces so that they're done. And then this is one and three-fourths, and this is one and three-fourths. And I'm probably going to just leave this open because this is what we're going to poke down into. So this will stay pink. And this we don't need to put anything on because that is where our boards are going to go that will go there. And so what I'm also going to do off camera is I have cut, these are, uh, I want to say, 9 inches wide by 11 inches tall. I've cut them in half, two of them, and these are literally off the backs of, uh, they're just the cardboard from the back of some paper 
product products. I mean, it was a bunch of pages for a workbook. So it was a workbook and these were the backs that were holding all that paper flat. So it's two pieces of cardboard cut in half and then these will sit right here and I'm leaving that gap there so that when we do this and I punch down through it, my awl will have space. All right, so let me get all the rest of these pieces cut. You don't need to watch me do that and I'll be right back. All right, so now we're ready to glue all of these parts on. So I, and I mismeasured this. This is one and a half inches this way, not one and three quarters of an inch. And again, we're going to use our tight bond because that's something I know works on this stuff. My son, actually, I had this leftover because I have a son who used this to create landscapes with back when he played this these games actually he still plays these games and he's an amazing artist so he actually is uh, spending a lot of time and actually has his own Instagram that shows all the really cool things he's doing so I'm just going to I think I got that on a little too thick I'm going to just wipe some of that off grab a paper towel and use that to get some of that off and we'll try not to put quite so much now for the top I just want this to point out so you can see it's going this way and we're going to put that on there and try to line that up as best as we can to the edge just maybe a little tiny bit over the edge we're going to do the same thing now on this side and actually, I'm going to turn it this way so you can see a little bit better. So I'm going to just put two strips down here because it looks like I don't need nearly as much as what I was using before. Just make sure you get it out to the edges. Whoops! Bound and determined to knock that off. But we do want to get it all the way to the edges because we want to make sure that this paper... Whoops! This cardstock sticks really well. So for this one now we're going to make sure that it faces this way. All right. And then we're going to do these inside pieces. I think it's going to be easiest to just do it on the paper this time instead of trying to, to do it on, actually on the side. So we're going to, again, just do this. And what I'm going to do now is pretty much just stop talking and I'll just speed this up so you can see what I did. And that way you don't have to sit here and be totally bored by my doing all of this. All right, so here we go.
this. The last thing I'm going to do is, uh, if I can find it, I used to have some blue painter's tape, but I think I'm going to tape the edges, and then when we're done, we're actually going to use paper or some kind of a tape or even ribbon. Um, so I will be right back with that to kind of hold all of this in place. All right, so now we are at the place where I've let all of this dry. It's dry and stuck to this. However, I do want to put some nice finishing touches on this. So we're going to put some pieces over these joints where these pieces of paper met. A couple of different things. You could use masking tape if you want to go for maybe a vintage feel. You could even go so far as to take your distress ink and distress it. Uh, you could use um, duct tape. Duct tape com has come out with some gorgeous colors, and you could definitely use duct tape. You could use washi tape. This is my bucket o washi tape. And But if you use washi tape, make sure you're using something that's fairly wide, uh, and you'll also need to glue it down, because washi tape is made to be temporary. It is not a permanent tape. You could use book tape, you could use fabric, you could use ribbon. So you have a whole lot of options. What I'm simply doing is, I will show you real quickly, I did go ahead and glue the two boards together that will be the sides with this gorgeous paper and covered it and I had plenty of leftover. So what I'm doing is using that as the accent pieces for this so that it sort of all goes together. Of course, this all came out of the same paper pad and that makes it really easy to make sure everything coordinates. So I just wanted to show you real quickly. I've cut everything to one inch in the right height that it needs to be, but it needs to bend around the corners. So I'm scoring it right down the middle. They're one inches wide. And a lot of people think you score and then bend this way, but you don't. When you score, you're bending it back this way. So we wanted to score it with the, the right side up. So now that we've gotten that far, let me just set this aside. And we're going to grab this piece. I am going to grab some three in one. We'll see if my three, actually, I'm gonna grab my Fabrifix. I think I need to water down my three in one. I'm going to start with the sides first. Just apply some glue. Now we can use this because this is not going directly onto the foam. This is only going on the um, paper. So it's paper to paper and we don't need to worry about that. And what I like is this does not have a right side up or a wrong side up. So this piece here is just going to go right there. And of course, with a lot of glues, you just simply have to, um, you know, hold it for a few minutes. So I'm going to get all of this done. And then we have one more part, one last part to do that will involve a little bit more of that tight bond glue. So once I get done with all of this, we will glue that last piece on, let it dry the 30 minutes that it needs to dry, and it will be done. Those little accent pieces on there that covers up and 
kind of bonds the corners. You could, if you wanted to, go ahead and add some here, especially because, for example, this maybe I should have done a little bit differently because I didn't cut this perfectly if that bothers you. You can add a little bit more and for whatever reason I got this side correct. So um, clearly this was not cut correctly, but that's okay. This is for my own personal use. So yes, if you wanted to go back and add a few more pieces, you could. So the last part we've got is to take these two pieces that I have covered and it's two pieces of cardboard thick then we're going to glue them right to the sides here and that should hold it and then I have these three um, toothpicks here to space it because you want to leave a gap and part of the reason why I wanted to have the foam on the bottom is so that I don't stab through I have tons of little marks all over my workspace because I have uh, you know, poked through things or poked down into things that went all the way through. So that is why I wanted this foam core was to prevent that from happening. So now we're going to apply the, the tight bond just to this last little section. Just a nice strip of it right along there. One more on this side. We're just going to go ahead and do it all at the same time. That way we can line it up. All right, and there's that. Snap the cap. And then we simply place these right there and press down. Oops, looks like I got too much there. Let's get some of that. It's oozing all over the place. Grab some of that off of there. And we put this one down here also. Make sure they line up. And we're just going to leave that now to let it dry. When we come back, the last thing I'll do is take out these... Um, toothpicks and we will be done. So we're to the end here and what I ended up doing was to hold the sides where they needed to be. I took a, this is a really old book, but I just took a big heavy book and that pressed everything into the sides. So we are done and I'm going to pull out all of my toothpicks this is what it looks like. It has the, the angle that we need. This is deep enough. I would really have to poke this all the way through down into this to go all the way through two inches of this foam. And that's not my, my intent to ever do. So let's take this for a real quick ride. I've got, let's grab four sheets of just plain paper I'm going to take it and I'm simply going to fold this in half we're going to I, I think what I'm going to do though I do like to do this and this is just a little hint is I love to take paper clips I just grab some paper clips and then I actually paper clip my signatures together so if I'm working with a bunch of different size pages, this all happens to be the same page, but if I'm working with different size pages, then all my signatures are held together. You can do all four sides. I usually just do two. We're going to drop it down into our punch, and I'm just going to punch three holes. I'm going to do like a three hole pamphlet stitch. We'll just do three holes. You will notice that, yes, there are holes here. The more you use it, the more holes you will have in the center here. Don't worry about that. That's actually part of how this is made to work, is that you will continue to punch holes. Eventually, you may even have a whole valley through here. That's fine. It will still continue to work even like that. That is why we didn't put any paper here. Eventually, you would punch through all that paper, 
if you wanted to and you don't care that works too it's just it's not really going to be seen and so I left that part blank but there is your homemade foam core I don't even know what this is called it's a book cradle or a signature cradle or a signature punching cradle so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I've inspired you to be creative today.